Well, Nigel, let's just do a bit of um, uh, squad news. Obviously, we know the two cup tie players are available again. Yeah. Anything picked up? Any injuries? Anything like that? Um, not injuries as such. We, we've had a few, uh, you know, a few aches and pains, and, and had a look at them this morning to make sure everybody's okay. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we uh, we're in decent shape actually. Yeah. And, and having those two to come back in just yeah. gives that little bit of, of freshness and, and they'll be desperate to you know, to be involved in, in some way, shape or form. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, we've, not fortunate, but we, we've had the luxury, I suppose, in some ways of being able to um, select from a, a, a pretty stable squad of late. And uh, that's that's been something which I think has helped us as well in terms of results. Um, and you know the, the team's playing pretty well. We, we've been uh, pleased with how, yeah, I mean how, how the results have gone since the Christmas period, of course, um, and even the performance of the night. Even though we 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 got beat, I think it was a really positive performance in many ways. And, and when you're in a run like that, mm. you obviously I'm sure you're guarding against complacency, but you don't want to change too much. How do you try and sort of keep it going for as long as possible? Um, just try to make sure that that we get the selection right as much as anything. I mean, they, look, we we do have some frustrated players because they're either not starting or um, you know awaiting their chance. But I, I just think it's it's uh, something that players have to deal with, and I suppose when they do get the chance, it's even more important that they are able to take it. So uh, it's hard to keep everybody happy. But you know that that's that's not my job <laughs> to keep people happy, um, really. So um, yeah, we go into this game knowing that we'll need a a strong performance again. And actually, as games go after the excitement of uh, of midweek, mm. this is probably a, a good next game to have, is it? Because it's not one that you can take lightly, and, and the fans certainly won't let you do that. No, absolutely not. And we we don't intend to do that ourselves. It's uh, it's a game which there is always pressure on uh, local derbies and um, yeah we need to uh, we need to make sure that our performance is right first and foremost you know we I want us to play with the same sorts of energy levels that we have done um, and yeah be as uh, be as aggressive as we can with you know staying within the rules it's a it's always you know, when you play local derbies, it's about being able to control the emotions and just make sure the performance is right. That's the big thing. And it's that knife edge, isn't it? It's that sort of being intensive enough so that you're doing what you've done well that's got you this this run without letting it just go that that step too far. Yeah, I mean, all, it, that's always the case. And, and we know that they will be, you know, they're at home. They'll want to start quickly against us. Um uh, you know that they, they, they've had a another change of manager, and and of course, uh, when you have changes, um, sometimes you get a response. But you always try and I think, or, or when people go in, they try and get a, um, their ideas over quickly. So it's uh, we've got to be prepared for for it being a different game to the one that we played at our place. And I think a lot of, of your players from the performance in midweek, mm. the result not what he wanted, but they'll have gone toe to toe with such a good standard of players that actually they'll, they'll be you know as confident, if not more so, than they, they might have been going into the match. Yeah, but it's also important to make sure that that there is not an air of overconfidence too. It, it's the balance is always uh, it, it's always I think a challenge to get that right. Um, so. Uh, that's in the past now. It, it, you know, I've said loads of times that the uh, the championship program is the most important thing, and but we also recognise that that the cup games have helped us to to build some sort of positive momentum, and now it's important that we uh, get back to uh, the league program with with another good performance and. Uh, you know, we'll need to be at our best to win. Thank you, Alex. Cheers. Certainly, the game, so there's been a lot of sort of afterglow from the game in terms of what people said about players, what people said about the club, and it's been overwhelmingly positive. So, how 
do you kind of shut that off to then focus on Carver? Because more so than any other mm. game really this season. Well, I suppose my way of doing it, I, I'm not really aware of that too much. So um, I, I think the, the performance itself uh, is enough. Um, and, and it's always, as far as I'm concerned, about getting back to uh, what is our primary task, and that is to affect our league position uh, in a positive way. So, um, yeah, the, the, whatever people have said or uh, have comment on, commented about, it, it's, it's important to either just acknowledge it, and, but really we've got to move on because it, it's, it is about being consistent in the league. Just to, sorry, I'll, this will be the last one. No, it's okay. But the um, decision to replace George Tanner at half time. Yeah. What, what was behind that, if I may ask? Um, to get a bit more, um, a bit more of an attacking threat on the right hand side, really, as much as anything. Um, uh, George hadn't had too many opportunities to get forward. Getting Andy on there was, I think, uh, um, just gives us two different attacking players on the right hand side just to give us a bit more of a, a different look to us because would you say that's the one sort of in terms of room for improvement for George in terms of his progression to become a more attack or have that in his locker as a, in the attacking sense yeah but maybe but actually when you've got somebody um, like Mark Sykes in front really as a fullback that there aren't too many occasions that you need to, I suppose, get past him. He's a, he's a right footer playing on the right. If if we had a left footer playing on the right and there was the tendency to drift inside, like we have on the right when Mimeti plays, uh, I think that's that's the trigger for an overlap. But um, well, I, I I don't really it, I don't really think too much about that. It's more about getting the best out of each player for what they bring. So. I think George has shown good development again this season, and that's uh, that's a positive um, positive aspect of, of of his own development. But certainly for us as a club, it means it's it's uh, it's filled a position that you know has been questionable for a while. I think here, um, you know, so we're 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 pleased with how he's how he's done this season. Um, yeah, so. And Mark Sykes as a right back. Is he's very good. Is it, the is start of the game as well as yeah, I mean, Sykes is a really good 1v1 defender as well. I think mean, that's something that we can't overlook. Um, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's been a real plus for us this year because when you consider uh, he was playing League One last year, causing Man City a few problems in midweek. That's not a bad shift in <laughs> where you've been to where you are. But again, he's a player who who has a, a really good um, physical attributes too. I mean, he's, he's developed very, very well physically um, in terms of his strength and he's got plenty of pace. So yeah, it's, it's another decent story for us. It was quite an intense occasion um, on the back of the whole game as well, in terms mm. of a lot of players played 90 minutes both games. Mm. Um, how much of the fatigue is going to, how much of the, in terms of your decision for the starting 11 tomorrow, how much does fatigue come into it and have you had to sort of, um, in terms of the load on players during training, has that been adapted? Yeah, very game? much so. I mean, it, it's been recovery really and then today's been, uh, I mean, normally I'd, I'd select the side before we go out and train. But, uh, or name the side rather, um, but we wanted to have another look at them this morning. Uh, the players know what the, the team, the starting eleven is now, and I just think it's really important that we, whatever the selection is, that that again the bench is vital, and we have um, certainly more attacking options, and we do have uh, defensive options. But I also think it's the, the forward line that has to be um, at their freshest because they, they are they're the trigger for the whole team. So we play well when the forward line's pressing effectively. 
and is showing the ability to when we have the ball to, to hurt our opponents so there's a lot of emphasis on uh, the fitness levels and the ability to reproduce those sort of high intensity um, moves that we that, that we try and create so yeah th those are the big factors but we do I mean <laughs> the good thing is that we do have lots of options and you know the Sunderland game we made three changes at the same time and and I think that's the benefit of being able to um, yeah, utilize as many subs as you can at the moment so um, it, it, that helps us I think. It feels a bit harsh to always bring this up when you're talking about the Joe Williams mm. um, you know him putting a right on ship I thought on, mm. on the Tuesday night. I mean he's I thought the whole midfield was, did, was outstanding but him considering once upon a time there was concerns about how many games he could mm. play in a week he could potentially now play three how's he kind of how's he doing and how's he got over that to put himself in a position where he can do that well, how 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 does he get over it? it? It's to do with the amount of work that you have to put in, and the staff have invested a lot of time in Joe as well. So, a lot of it's education as much as anything, and, and understanding yourself. And uh, so, you've heard me talk about on many occasions how we make the squad more robust and fitter, and. It doesn't happen overnight and certainly in a championship season when players are playing games there are no or there are very few windows uh, of opportunity for any sort of physical adaptation so you know what they do in the summer and what they do in pre-season and small windows that you may have in international breaks but only for players who haven't been playing so forget that for joe it, it's a uh, uh, it's something which has taken um, yeah, a lot of energy and time by staff and player himself. So, um, yeah, it's. It, but there are always risks, of course there are. There are always going to be risks, and um, uh, we just try and we try and. I mean, this is the benefit of operating with a smaller squad that it feels tighter. But of course, still in that, there are players who. Are frustrated that they're either not starting or uh, have not had opportunities but I would like to think that the only reason people have not had opportunities is because the team's playing well. With those player frustrations you mentioned earlier, mm. well, are you, is that how they're around the club on the training ground or are they coming to you to inform you they're frustrated? Um, no, I know that I, I know that they are I know that they are um, but that doesn't mean that they're, you know, they're, but they're, as, a, as a group of players, they're great. They're great. Um, like I've said, my job's not to, it, it is not to be the best, I don't know, I'm best mate of theirs. I'm, I'm somebody who has to make decisions and sometimes they're, they can seem unfair or they can seem um, difficult, but that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. Can I just check on a couple of players? You indicated yeah. that Tommy Conway might be, be slightly ahead of Cal. Terms of yeah. Back. Is yeah. He, is tomorrow is that a Oh no, for, no. When when I say he he's he's training with the first team now. Um, he's had another scan this week, which has shown uh, big improvements. But the difference between training with the first team and then going out there, and I've already said that the the front line are our that they've got to be able to reproduce levels of of. of running stats which are a bit crazy really so um, when you've got uh, fatigue's the biggest problem for soft tissue injuries so you know uh, and and that means fatigue of the muscle not fatigue of <laughs> heart and lungs stuff so uh, he's still he's not going to be in contention for, for a couple of weeks yet at least um, if not more Last one from me, um, it was mentioned on the, the radio before the game, mm. uh, with the John Lansdowne, um, we often ask about player contract situations. Mm. Um, yours is now becoming a talking point, perhaps, among supporters, if you like. You've still what, like two years, months ago? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how it changes. No. Um, but is yeah. that on the agenda for no. you at all? It, and it doesn't need to be either. Uh, I, look, 
whenever whenever you sign a contract, I mean, look, I've got another, I've got more than a, a year left, so, and I'm also a realist too. I know things can change quickly, as they have done this year. Um, I'm very comfortable in my own skin, so to speak. So, I I don't think it's something that we need to be talking about publicly and and. Um, a year's a, an awful, a year's probably more than the average tenure of a manager these days. So what's the point of talking about contracts at the moment? It, it's, uh, I hope that the, the club trust me to, to keep doing the job that I, I, I always strive to do. And like I say, I'm very, I'm very calm about the situation anyway. So um, depends how I feel in, a, in another year's time as well. I mean, there's lots of things to consider. And, uh, and and I'm just uh, I'm a part of a team that's working hard to try and uh, create a, a more uh, attractive but uh, solid football foundation here and I think we just have to be sensible about how we look at it um, and I don't really overthink the contract thing too much uh, because that's, football management is is such a is such a uh, a bizarre um, industry, you know, job to have in many ways. So uh, I'm I'm very happy to be here. Thanks, Cheers. And obviously important to just mention about earning a new contract and the players. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering on the transition of obviously Andy King being a player club. I'm just wondering, obviously the near season how he's in that one well it, again when the, it depends on the person so uh, other clubs have been at where players have been senior players and are looking to make a transition um, it, it's not the first time uh, I've been at a club where we've decided to do that and I think it's just it, it's important for players to explore how they're going to move forward as well um, in terms of Andy King, his his football knowledge and his uh, way of sharing his experiences, I think, is has been invaluable to his to a lot of his teammates. I think he'll be a, an excellent coach when he decides no longer to play. But he's still he's still got a value for us as a player too. So. I think really, as much as anything, whyever he's in this type of a role, it's just important for him to use it as an opportunity to find out more about himself. He's also doing work with uh, some of the academy sides. And I think that, again, is, a, is, a, uh, is an important step because one of the things that you don't necessarily um, recognize when you are a player is it, how you feel about yourself when you're actually talking as a coach. So it's a completely different skill set. Um, some people find it the transition very, very easy, and some find it a bit more difficult. So uh, he's been a really important member of the squad, but he's also been very important for as a, if you like, a bit of a conduit of info too and I don't mean that in a in a way that undermines me in the dressing room it's just that there is a he's he's a well respected player and he does the job very well he just needs to make sure that his his conditioning levels continue to improve because he had a decent pre-season, got himself in, he was playing catch-up in pre-season. Um, and then he's had a, a, a just a, a stop-start um, time with us so far. So it's really difficult, it's hard to try and explain the conditioning levels that you need to be able to step in because training, when we do our training sessions, sometimes it's on a full pitch, which big areas, they're the ones that you find out the most about players so um, and then the, depending on the type of session that you're looking for 
you reduce areas and some players can can shine in those smaller areas but when you open it up you know there's still a there's still room for improvement and 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 Kane you know, like I've already said it's difficult to be involved in match day squads especially if you're a sub so you're missing out on a on an extra training day on a Saturday morning or a, or a heavy session on a Friday so actually you can fall further behind if you're not careful and that's where we need to get the balance right by reintroducing him uh, but also making sure he has the um, foundation of fitness to be able to step into it because it's been a frustrating season for him. Cheers, thanks.